All right, audios are connected. Hi, Angelina and Sam. My name is Francesca Borland. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Niagara University. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we are here to talk about our academic exploration program. Um, it is a smaller group. It looks like it might just be us. So if you have questions throughout, we obviously have um, Carolyn Mackey here, who's the Director of AEP, and then Maddie Evans, who made her way through the AEP program as well, who's a current student. Um, and they're going to be talking about the AEP program. If you would like to unmute and ask questions that way, show us your face is totally fine, um, whatever you're comfortable with, or you can just use the chat box for any questions and we can kind of chat throughout this. I know you're both, um, you've both applied, so that's awesome. If you've heard back, um, that's great. I believe, Sam, your application is under review. Angelina, I believe you should have a decision back. Um, if not, it's coming soon, but we're happy to answer any questions about the application process, AEP, and any anything kind of going forward. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to Carolyn now and she's going to talk about AEP. And like I said, any questions that come up in your head, unmute yourself or you can go ahead and write in the chat box. Well, yes, thanks Francesca. Hi, I'm Carolyn, Director of Academic Exploration. So two apologies. First one is that I'm coming to you live in black and white, which seems to be some technical challenge that we can't figure out or I can't at the moment. So nonetheless, it's still the same person whether I'm live in color or otherwise. Um, secondly, I'm a little bit under the weather, so my voice is a little strained and hopefully it's gonna hold up. Um, I have some, I had some of those unpleasant type of coughing fits where I lost my voice throughout the day today with students. Um, so if that happens, if I, if I, my video all of a sudden puts up my <laughs> Niagara University picture or name, that's because I need a minute and hopefully Francesca and Maddie can join in or jump in and um, just give some additional details. So that's the two disclaimers. So other than that, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, I believe you said it, it's uh, Sam and Angelina. So welcome. Um, what I want you to know mostly about this program is that it is one of the few in the area that will be um, fully supported by a university for students who are still deciding majors, right? So it's just not a common thing that all colleges and universities will have a program entirely dedicated to the students that are moving through this process. So um, it's, it's really what I think is, is special about Niagara with the commitment uh, the university makes to students and, and all the ways that um, that they can support students, especially throughout, you know, especially of late, right? There's never been a time more than ever in higher education that students have really needed support in all areas. So um, what are the nuts and bolts about academic exploration? It's a program you can participate in up to four semesters. And at any point that you're ready to decide your major, um, you can declare, so there's no minimum requirements. And throughout that time that you're participating in our program, you're meeting with an assigned advisor who remains with you throughout that entire time until you're ready to declare. So you build a really close um, and productive working relationship with the advisor that you're assigned. So it's not like you come in and have to see somebody new each time, start your story over, or pick up where things were left off last with someone else. So um, the advisors and advisees really get to know each other quite well throughout the process. Um, some of the top um, concerns for students in the, in, you know, that start the program or come to these events to find out about the program is that if I start off without a major selected at Niagara, if I'm in academic exploration, is this going to hold me up in any way for graduation? So that's a resounding no. And that's because of two really important cornerstones of our program which would be solid academic advisement and experiential learning. So what I mean by those two areas is that the one piece, right, the one cornerstone academic advisement, this is us as advisors helping our students select courses for every semester they're with us. So we're making sure that those courses are always fulfilling requirements, know what those requirements being fulfilled are. You're well aware of not only your plan for your um, the courses that you're taking in the here and now for the semester you're in, but also for how it plays out in your four-year time frame. And that's where we're constantly visiting that plan that advisement is done with the four-year graduation in mind. So, and that's taking into account all the exploring that you're doing. And then additionally, the experiential learning component is about us helping students select opportunities 
to participate in that would be outside of the classroom. So this is experience that you're getting, hands-on learning, real life situations, right? So it might be that we refer you to an event that's being hosted by one of the various colleges at the university that will teach you a little bit more about the major you're interested in or an associated career. Um, or it might be to let you know about a career fair or it's to do some online research. And all of this is facilitated through the conversations you're having with an advisor, right? And that's through uh, uh, appointments that we have our students um, sign up for each semester. So minimally we meet three times with our students. They're welcome to come as much as possible. And it's through these appointments that we do all of this work, right? To help you understand the majors you're interested in, how they connect to careers, and then getting ready for registration and completing that process. So I'd say, you know, in summary, one of the big things we try to do in academic exploration is, is empower our students. We want our students to really know the degree paths that they're on and what that entails. And not only that, but what might be all the other experiences you want to pull in to your time while you're at Niagara. So if you want to pursue a minor, if you're entertaining a double major, if you're thinking about a study abroad experience down the road, um, you want to join an academic club or you're holding um, some position of responsibility at the university, all of those things that a student wants to pursue, we can help craft throughout your time in AP. You may not achieve all of those things while you're with us, you know, because a lot of times those experiences come after students declare. Um, but what we're doing is we're just making sure that if there are opportunities that you wanna take advantage of, that you know about them as soon as possible. And that any planning that might entail keeping some areas open for coursework and otherwise, um, that you're well aware of what that involves. And I know throughout the time that Francesca and I have worked together with these events um, and the questions that she often fields from students, it comes in a lot of the big areas of, if I'm an AEP, you know, will I get help with selecting my classes? Absolutely. If I am concerned about changing my mind with the majors that I'm exploring at any point, is that possible? Absolutely it is. Um, transfer credit. So uh, if I have credit that's coming from AP or other college related credit that's through my high school, um, are you aware of this and, and what, what will that do or what will that look like, right? So we help students understand what they might be bringing with them from high school and what requirements it may fulfill at the university. Um, I think that's um, some of the big areas that we've covered. I don't know if I'm missing one. Francesco, let me know or We'll just add it in the mix, but um, I want to stop there because otherwise I can go on and on about the program and all the things that are great and take up a lot more time than I really should at this point because I'd rather bring in um, likely, you know, unless Francesca has something else to add before we bring in Maddie and maybe she'd like to share a little bit about uh, what her experience has been in the program. And that way students, um, you know, those of you in attendance can think about what it is you need to know more either from Maddie or myself um, by the time we take a pause and you know and Francesca is probably also fielding questions that you might be putting in the chat box if needed so um, but those are the highlights of the program and so again at this point you know if Maddie wants to jump in and, and add in her personal experience so for, or uh, what it was I should say in the program. All right um, so with AEP, I think a lot of people assume that an exploratory major is only geared towards students who have no idea what their major is going to be in college. And where I sat was I had too many ideas. So coming in, um, you kind of get to pick and choose which or multiple majors that you want to test out and try. Um, so right off the bat, I kind of chose education, communications, um, like marketing, just like a wide range that could get me experience in a bunch of different fields to figure out where I actually fit. Um, and then as you progress through the program, you kind of play the part of each major every semester. So my first semester here, I played the part of an education major. I got to go into the classroom. I, did, I met with education professors and I did everything that that major um, would typically do. Um, and then I realized it wasn't for me and kind of moved on. So every semester I got new experiences um, as if I was a full part of a specific major. And that kind of helped me narrow down. 
Um, I also, well, I should probably um, clarify. So my major now is sociology with minors in American Sign Language, Deaf Studies, and Psychology. Um, so none of those were in my original three that I came in looking for either. So um, through the AEP program, you also get to explore a ton and you can find things any semester up through the entire four year in the program that click with you and that you will follow throughout the rest of your four years. So um, my piece is just knowing that there is a whole world of possibilities out there and AEP is just very, very helpful in letting you dip your toe into a lot of different ponds as soon as you come into college. Nice. <laughs> That was awesome. Thanks, Maddie. Um, yeah, and I think it's important. I know both of you guys, Angelina and Sam, have applied directly to the AEP program, which is great. I think a lot of what I see while I'm traveling around meeting students is that they stress and worry about settling on a major before you apply or during the application process and trying to pick a major before you come to co this college experience. And it's it's definitely not something you have to stress about applying directly to the AAP program and taking your time and figuring it out is what college is all about. So I definitely um, find and encourage students that have either so many ideas or no ideas to just apply directly to the AAP program. It is worth every minute of it. Um, so it's great that you guys have applied directly to it. Um, and it's nice to reiterate that it definitely isn't just an undecided program. You really get so much advisement and you work closely with um, your AEP advisors and you get the time to explore, but it's also strategic in how it's set up and making sure you have that four-year plan. So I think it's really important to just know that you're investing not just in, I'm going in undecided, but you're investing in this program that's strategically set up to help you obviously explore, figure out what you want to do, connect all these ideas to careers and kind of figure it out and add these minors and majors and whatever it may be along the way to get to where you want to be during your, your senior year. Um, so yeah, that's my little spiel about it. But do you guys have any questions? Like I said, it's a smaller group. So if you have any questions, we're so happy to be able to chat with you or put it in the chat box and we're happy to answer any questions that you might have or that have come up throughout um, our time talking about AEP. Yeah, and so I, um... Giving, I just want to jump back in and capitalize on what Maddie said and Francesca as well. While you're thinking of your questions, I'll give you a minute now that you know Francesca said, "Okay, time if you have them." So it always <laughs> helps if you can take a minute, right? So I'll, I just want to jump in and really thank Maddie for what she added by saying, um, you know, that you're you're playing the part. In other words, um, students worry that if they come in, or I shouldn't say it's always a worry. It sometimes is just a concern or, or just a really an unknown factor that if you come into AEP. You know, are you just taking exploratory courses or you're just doing these courses that are sort of removed from what are actual courses towards majors? And the truth of it is that that's not the plan. It's really to get you integrated towards majors and taking those courses that count specifically towards those majors um, and, and to be in step so that when you do declare, there's more of a seamless transition from AEP into your major. So we're always trying to strike the right balance with the courses that students are taking to go towards requirements that again, um, count in a couple directions. And so for, you know, students, you know, tonight that really you have the understanding and the language of your um, school experience from kindergarten on through high school. Um, so there's new terms you're learning. So when you pursue a major at Niagara, no matter what the major is, you're always taking courses towards the major and towards what we call general education requirements. So there's a little balance between those two that's always ideal to strike. And that's what we, we help students with. Um, <clears throat> and as Francesca said, you know, students stress about this process. So maybe Maddie, after some questions are asked, or if we're still waiting for him, she might be able to speak a little bit to the part about what it felt like to be, you know, having those concerns at first and how it's really common for AEP students to share those concerns initially. Like in other words, it's really all right if you're feeling, you know, a little um, anxious about this process, that's a common feeling. So what I mean by that is that's a shared experience. A lot of students brand new to the program are all feeling that same way. 
Um, and then the, the trick of it is, is that as you participate and come to your appointments and engage in the process and take advantage of things that we're helping students to put together and experience, that anxiousness or concerns that comes down because you're starting to see how things are coming together. You're starting to see how, as you're exploring, you're moving forward, you're completing requirements, you're working towards a graduation plan. Um, and it just helps, you know, to take a little bit of the stress off of, of the process by, um, by how those things evolve. You know, so the last thing I'll end with, and then we'll get back to potential questions, or again, if Maddie wants to jump back in, um, those three groups, right? This is what Francesca alluded to a little bit, like it's okay if you have no idea, right? So that's one group of students in our program, the students who say, I have absolutely no idea what I want to major in or where to start. A second group that says I have two, three or more ideas. How do I navigate all those choices? And then lastly, the group that says I might be heavily leaning in one direction of a major, but I'm just not ready to declare it. And I would rather be an AEP and test it out. And therefore, if it doesn't work out, you know, I have um, plan B already built in by being in the program. So yeah, again, thanks for chiming in Francesca and Maddie for sharing your piece. That's tremendous. So um, I'll step back again and see if we have questions or if Maddie wants to follow up with a little bit about, you know, what it, the feelings of being in the program at times. No questions, guys. <laughs> um, I'm sure they I guess, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just wondering if like you ever felt rushed like throughout the program, like since you have, you're in the same class for a semester and like, you know, immediately you kind of feel like it's not really for you. Um, are you like, were you ever worried? Like, oh no, now I'm like, I don't know if I have enough time to figure out what's right for me or like, I guess. Yes. Yeah, so um, coming in, um, I definitely was just anxious about having to make a choice. So like, just, I'm a very indecisive person, just making a concrete choice and having to stick with that for four years felt very wrong to me. Um, but I never felt rushed um, because the way the program works is that you get to um, like make these choices, you build your schedule with your advisor. So Carolyn was actually my advisor freshman year and you sit down with your advisor and they kind of give you a guide work for what you should be taking, but you yourself get to make the end choice. Um, and then we have something called add drop week where the first two weeks you can take a class. And if you're really not vibing with it or something, something feels wrong, you can get rid of it and there's no repercussions and just pick up a different class. So actually my second semester in the program, I was like, wow, I think I really like communications. I'm gonna sign up for this class. Um, and then actually changed my mind and picked up sociology within the first week. So it's never been a problem of feeling rushed or feeling out of place um, because you do have kind of the time to make changes and adjust yourself, if that makes sense. Yeah, great for adding that, Maddie. And Sam, that's a tremendous question. Um, I would think a lot of students have that same question for this um, program. And just to add to what Maddie said, um, part of that advisement process is that we're always putting all of those majors and all of those directions in front of you and saying and illustrating, I should say, and teaching you, here's where all your coursework will be going as you sign up for courses, right? And even if the transfer credit you're bringing in with you, here's how they're going to place if you go in this one direction. Here's how it'll shift if you're going in this next direction, right? So we look at all of those directions simultaneously. And part of that is also to, to illustrate how as you're moving forward, really the experiences you have in that first semester and the courses you are taking, we teach you how the placement of those courses is still leaving open flexibility, that there is really not, nothing you're gonna do in your first semester that is gonna completely derail all opportunities out there. And that takes a little understand, a little while to understand for students who are new to the university, how, you know, like that, that's a normal feeling like, oh, a whole semester. And now I'm not sure that was right. And now I'm down to the next semester that's already underway. And again, we, we're going back to how 
everything that you're taking as you keep progressing through these changes and maybe a right turn or a left turn from semester to semester, we're still showing you how courses are fulfilling those requirements and that you're still moving forward. So I think that helps to take away that feeling of, of you know, worried that you're running out of time. Um, and another common experience has been students who have changed their mind, like after semester number three, and like, you know, really concerned, like, oh, I, you know, over the, over uh, the break, I had this, you know, tremendous conversation with someone or some sort of experience that they had this revelation about another direction that they might want to consider. So again, even at that point, we're going to reevaluate where you are with everything that you've been taking and then, you know, revisit that for your plan and, and show you how it might map out. So um, <clears throat> that's, that's a big piece of that empowerment, like making sure students really know the paths for everything and what it would take. But um, again, yeah, great question about that sense. And I think it's, it, be, it begins in the beginning, with, like worried that you're already behind and we're going to constantly reassure you that everything's going to be all right. And Maddie made a good point too, right? Like just about being indecisive in general, that can just be a characteristic of students who would have a difficult time, <laughs> right? She's reiterating, like, and I, I'll often ask students this too. Do you have a hard time deciding what you want to eat, at, you know, or what movie to pick, right? Like, it just might be a characteristic of your personality that um, you just have this little bit of apprehension anytime it means like going with something, right? So we work with those ideas of, of what that might feel like to a student uh, and how to support them. So that comes back to the holistic support we provide in the program. So not just to teach you all about majors and where your courses are going, but to truly address where students are with what they're feeling in the process as well, right? To make them um, hopefully feel um, comfortable as much as, as much as we can and as often as possible throughout the process. So in the beginning, I often will say this to students, you gotta get comfortable with the uncomfortable at first, and then it'll start to progress from there, so. I have kind of something to add on comfort and support. Um, Cause those are kind of like the biggest things for me when I was choosing the AEP program. So um, what I like to say is like support is coming from two places. So like A, you have your peers because AEP is actually the largest major of the incoming classes. So one fifth of the people coming in with you are also undecided. Um, and they're taking the same like steps as you and you also will meet them because we have a freshman seminar where like everyone kind of same major gets together, but AEP is a major. Um, so you kind of get to see other people be on their individual path and yours might differ, but um, just knowing you have other people who are in the same boat as you helps a lot. Um, and then the second piece of support is coming from that relationship with your advisor. So a typical major meets once a semester and they help with schedules, um, which is great. But AEP, you meet actually three times a semester. So I was getting massive amounts of support from making my schedule to taking like personality inventories to figure out where I would fit, um, which kind of helped my like scatterbrain of many majors hone in on one or two. Um, so, and Carolyn, actually, I think you mentioned um, showing how credits can line up in multiple different majors. Um, I had those three in mind, and I think Carolyn made me um, a list of the classes I need to take in all three, and I still have them, and I've just been editing it every year. So, like, I just have this, like, list that was created for me three years ago, and I'm still working off of it. So it's just showing that like that support early on is like still, still a piece of my daily life. Like I took what I learned from the AEP program and now I'm able to apply it to my specific major. That's awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Maddie. Do you guys have any questions? Any follow-up? This is such great information. Great question, Sam. But um, just a little bit about just the admission standpoint, um, obviously we're, you guys have your applications in, which is great. Um, if you're interested in visiting campus, that's a great way to really get a feel of the university and kind of um, see campus and hear a little bit more from everyone and all the departments on campus. Um, our next open house is gonna be on December 4th. So you can definitely take a look at that if you wanna see yourself coming to campus. 
um, you can sign up right on our website for those um, for those on campus events. So definitely encourage you to do that. Um, and then just reaching out to your specific admissions counselor. I'm sure you might've heard from them already, um, but keeping in touch with your admissions counselor, they're the ones reading your application and that are going through this process with you. Um, they're a great contact to have and just to keep in touch throughout the next few months of the application process and financial aid and everything like that. Um, we're just, we're here to help. We're here to answer any questions. You can always follow up with myself, Carolyn, and Maddie um, with any questions that might come after this. Um, but yeah, any kind of closing thoughts if there's no other questions? Anything else we want to add before we go? No. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I was going to say, we were so thorough in our presentation. We covered all potential of questions. <laughs> sure. Of course. But yeah, I just want to chime in and thank everyone for joining us as well. And um, uh, certainly to hang in there with with your school situations as they are right now, you know, we're all been trying to get back to what we call quote unquote normal. So hopefully that's been feeling that way for you folks um, with where you are with your your individual school systems. And, and I truly hope that that's been going as well as possible. All of us who work in higher education, um, you know, we do this a lot for what we, um, you know, enjoy when it comes to working with students. So to watch students and what they've been going through over the past I've said 16 months, but it's longer than that now. I got to change the number. I don't know if it's 18. I think we've all lost count. I know it's, you know, like hard to believe that 20. we're coming up to two years after the, you know, right yeah. after the new year. How long is it? 20. That's how old my 20. baby is. Oh, that's how 20. I, that's okay. how I compare. <laughs> there you go. So, right. There you go. That's a quick way for you to remember it. So yeah, <laughs> over these past 20 months, um, I know it's been a lot. So uh, there's certainly been things I have been um, sort of emphasizing to students that, you know, when they come to admissions events, that everything you've been doing that started with asynchronous classes and, and having to manage your time a little more independently or, or to go to class um, virtually at times and then have these breaks or to be having to reach out to uh, teachers independently and otherwise, right? Um, all of those are things that will prepare you for higher ed down the road. That's really what college students go through. You know, their, their, their days are different than what they were like in high school. It's not class after class after class. So managing that time independently, you know, in those asynchronous formats and otherwise and reaching out to professors and otherwise. Um, so again, those things that you've been dealing with that may not have all felt positive over these past 20 months. Um, I want to reframe it and say they've, they've actually been training you a little bit for higher ed down the road. So that might be one way to take it what felt like negative things at times and and realize there's actually a positive that'll eventually come out of it. But on that note, I'll just say, I hope you have a tremendous rest of the year and um, please feel, feel, to feel uh, free to follow up with me if you wanna meet again one-on-one -on -one at any point. Um, I'll put my contact information in the chat box now and welcome any future questions or future visits that you would like to request, either in person or virtual. So thanks again for your time tonight and for joining us. It was good to see everybody. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night and happy holidays if we don't hear from you um, sooner. But yeah, thank you and have a great rest of your night.